Hi everyone, in the series of question answers from industrial microbiology, we are going to discuss another question in this video. Write a brief account on different types of lactic acid fermentation. So again, here we have to give an introduction to fermentation, then we'll go with the lactic acid fermentation. So how can we define a fermentation that we already learned in the alcohol fermentation? Again, once again, we are supposed to learn here. Fermentation is the process in which organic compounds are going to serve as both electron donor and electron acceptor. And as I said, according to the pasture, fermentation is going to be the life in the absence of oxygen. So like this. We are having the different types of uh, uh, definitions or the meanings for the fermentation in different sciences like food microbiology, industrial, like this. And based on the end product form, fermentation can be classified into different types such as alcohol or ethanol fermentation, lactic acid fermentation, propionic acid, mixed acid fermentation, butyric acid butanol and homoestrogenic fermentation so depending upon the product form they were named according to the type of fermentation and in this video we are going to discuss about the lactic acid fermentation lactic acid fermentation so this lactic acid fermentation is going to be carried out by a group of bacteria called lactic acid bacteria which may be the gram-positive bacilli or gram-cocci, uh, gram-positive cocci. And these bacteria, that is lactic acid bacteria, are usually aerotolerant anaerobes. Okay, aerotolerant means they can grow in presence of oxygen, but they won't use the oxygen. So, aerotolerant anaerobes. And this lactic acid bacteria are going to convert the sugars into lactic acid which is the major source of this fermentation that is lactic acid fermentation and the difference that we are going to observe in different groups of bacteria is mainly the presence or absence of a key enzyme called as aldolase so this aldolase enzyme is going to be the very important enzyme in the glycolysis or glycolytic pathway. And coming to the importance of this lactic acid fermentation, the lactic acid fermentation is a very important in dairy industry as we know converting the milk into the curd. And not only that, we are also going to get the various types of products such as cheese, yogurt and other dairy products because of this lactic acid bacteria and certain species of streptococcus is going to play a major role in the dental caries because of the production of lactic acid on the tooth surface and even this lactic uh, acid bacteria or lactobacilli are going to present in the digestive tract that is human digestive tract which is very important in the digestion of milk and the persons who are going to lack this uh, lactobacilli in their intestine, they are unable to digest the milk. So those who are unable to have the digestion of the milk, so they are going to be given the lactobacillus estropilus in their diet. And as this lactic acid is a weak acid with a good solvent property, it was going to be readily polymerizes the production of uh, polymers and even the uh, lactic acid is going to provide the acidity in foods and beverages and going to act as a preservative in the food stuff and the lactic acid in the form of a calcium lactate is going to be employed in the baking powder as a source of calcium in pharmaceutical industries. Not only this, we are also going to use this lactic acid in plastic industry as well as in the textile and laundry industry where we use this as a fabric treatment. So these are the few importance or uses of the lactic acid fermentation that we are supposed to write. 
Now, depending upon the type of uh, organism or the type of the product, these lactic acid bacteria are going to have three different pathways to ferment the sugars into lactic. That is number one, homofermentative pathway or homolactic fermentation. And the second one is going to be the heterofermentative pathway. And the third one is going to be the bifidum pathway. So these three pathways are the ways by which the lactic acid bacteria is converting the sugars into, that is any sugar glucose into the lactate form. So that we will discuss in detail now. Let's start with the first one, that is homofermentative pathway. The homofermentative pathway or homolactic uh, fermentation is going to be mainly go through the by a pathway called as a glycolytic pathway or glycolysis by a group of bacteria called as streptococcus, enterococcus, lactococcus, pedicococcus and various lactobacillus species. So these are the few bacteria which are involved in the conversion of the glucose into the form of lactate and in the homofermentative or homolactic fermentation the sole end product is only lactate that means majority of the product that we are getting is the lactate and this homofermentative pathway one mole of glucose or one molecule of the glucose is giving rise to the two molecules of uh, lactate so as we know in the glycolysis pathway we are going to get the two molecules of pyruvate so from each pyruvate we are going to get lactate directly in the presence of an enzyme called as lactate dehydrogenase it's very simple so from the glucose you are supposed to write the pyruvate that means the whole glycolysis process and after the formation of pyruvate the pyruvate is getting converted into the lactate in the presence of lactate dehydrogenase so here we are going to have the synthesis of uh, two molecules of atp in the lactic acid fermentation by the homofermentative pathway so this is all very simple about the homofermentative pathway then moving to heterofermentative pathway so the name itself is indicating hetero so in the heterofermentative or heterolactic fermentative pathway other than the lact lactate we are also going to get some other product that way we call it as a heterolactate for fermentative pathway or simply heterofermentative pathway and the organisms which are performing this heterolactic fermentative pathway are going to be the leuconostoc some sort of a lactobacillus species is going to carry this heterolactic fermentation and what is the difference between the homolactate fermentation and the heterolactate fermentation means the absence of aldolase so once the, if aldolase is absent these bacteria cannot go with the glycolysis pathway so for that reason these heterofermentative bacteria are going to perform a special pathway that is a phosphoketolase pathway to oxidize this glucose 6-phosphate into the consent products yielding the lactate on one way and we are also going to get the ethanol here. So if you see this pathway, the glucose is being converted into glucose 6-phosphate and then to 6-phosphogluconate and then it is going to be decarboxylated that means the carbon dioxide is being removed from the 6-phosphogluconate to yield ribulose 5-phosphate and this ribulose 5-phosphate is going to be converted into xylose 5-phosphate and here is the step where a specific enzyme called phosphoketolase is giving rise to two molecules one is glycerolide 3-phosphate and one more is acetyl phosphate and this acetyl phosphate is going to be directly converted into acetaldehyde and then to ethanol in the presence of an enzyme called as acetate dehydrogenase or acetaldehyde dehydrogenase by the removal of hydrogen or addition of electron 
On the other side, if we observe whatever is happening in the glycolysis, the same thing is happening. The glycerol dehyde 3 phosphate is going to give rise to the pyruvate finally, and the pyruvate is going to convert it into lactate in the presence of an enzyme, lactate dehydrogen. So, if we observe the overall of this heterolactic fermentation, we are going to get one molecule of lactate one molecule of ethanol and one molecule of carbon dioxide from one molecule of glucose conversion. So as we are having the different products that are getting from this lactic acid fermentation, we call this as heterofermentative pathway. And we observe this kind of fermentation uh, in the bacteria mainly isolated from the plant silage and the milk. If we observe the Leuconostra genus is very, very widely used in the wine production and in fermentation of vegetables such as cabbage that is sauerkraut and cucumbers in the prickles and even in the manufacture of buttermilk, butter and the cheese where we are going to have the, these kind of the taste of uh, having the lactate ethanol. Okay, So this is very simple about the heterofermentative pathway. We have to write the species name where this heterofermentative pathway is occurring and the heterofermentative bacteria is going to take which pathway to convert the glucose into the lactate that is phosphoketolase pathway and the enzymes and how many ATPs are going to be produced from here means only one ATP whereas in the homolactic we are getting the two ATP. So this is uh, what you have to remember regarding this heterofermentative pathway. Then moving to the third type of the pathway that is bifidum pathway. So the bifidum pathway is going to be absorbed in the specific bacteria that is bifidobacterium bifidum and this bifidobacterium is a V or Y shaped bacteria which is an obligate anaerobe found in the intestinal tract of uh, breastfed human babies that is in the infant we are going to absorb this bifidobacterium which is very very essential for them to digest the uh, milk to convert into the lactate and if we observe this uh, bacteria is going to metabolize the glucose into lactate acetate that means we are going to get the three molecules of acetate and two molecules of lactate so here you can absorb this is one molecule of acetate and here you are going to get the two molecules of acetate so all together we are getting the three molecules and here is the two molecules of uh, lactate that means three is to ratio we are going to three molecules of acetate and two molecules of lactate so in this pathway the glucose is going to break down through the bifidum pathway by two phosphoketolases are going to involve. So here is one and here is one. And this fructose 6-phosphate, so the glucose is being converted into two molecules of, two glucose molecules are getting converted into two molecules of fructose 6-phosphate. And one fructose 6-phosphate is going to be converted into xylose 5-phosphate where we are going to get the lactate. And another fructose is going to be directly giving rise to acetate. On the other hand, it is also going to yield the ribose 5-phosphate and which is going to be converted into the 2-acetyl phosphate from where we are going to get the two molecules of acetate. And this uh, reaction, whatever the conversion of acetate is going to be involved in the presence of uh, acetate kinase. The conversion of uh, acetyl phosphate to acetate is going to be in the presence of acetate kinase here. And whereas here the glycolysis is the same, lactate dehydrogenase is involved in the formation of uh, lactate. So this is how the bifidum pathway is going to be used to have the three molecules of acetate and two molecules of lactate. So three is to two ratio we are going to get. And it's very simple, it is going to have the two molecules of glucose involved, which is going to be of uh, conversion into fructose 6 phosphate and another specific for xylose 5 phosphate, 
and these two phosphoketolases put the fructose 6 phosphate into xylose 5 phosphate and to acetyl phosphate and glycerol dehydrate 3 phosphate. And this glycerol dehydrate 3 phosphate is getting converted into the lactate in the presence of an enzyme lactate dehydrogenase. And the formation of acetate is going to be done by the uh, acetate kinase from the acetyl phosphate. So here as well as here the enzyme is acetate kinase. Thus, in whatever the bipedal pathway, the ATP is going to be more than that of the homo and the heterofermentative pathway. So, this is one of the reasons why the babies who are under the breastfeeding are going to get the energy just by drinking the milk of having this bacterium which is releasing the more ATP rather than the homo and the heterofermentative pathway. So this is all about the lactic acid fermentation and we are going to have another question in another video. Thank you.